Well, everyone, thanks for joining us today for our next episode of Mixed Messages with Jeff Bogue. My name is Joe Caruso, and I'll be your host as we dig into today's topic. From news sources to comedians, from friends to advertisements, it seems everyone has an idea of how we should think and live and make decisions. But when everyone disagrees, how do we cut through the noise? How do we sift through all the information overload and choose what governs our lives? As we pray and process these things, we want to offer a resource to navigate some of the day's most pressing topics and questions. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Joe. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Um, this is this is uh, this will be a fun conversation today, and by fun, I mean not necessarily. <laughs> um, you know, it'll be interesting to get into the nuances of the answers and stuff like that. But we're going to talk a little bit about cancer today. Okay. And I just know that like a lot of our listeners have been like, yeah. I'd be shocked if there's a listener that hasn't been somehow affected by cancer. Yeah. Sure. It it just ravages life destroys it, makes it hard even if you get through it. Um, and so I want to be sensitive to that. And it's not going to be fun. But I also want our listeners to know, like, we're getting into this. And so yeah. if it's close to the vest, just be... Go there. Yep. Um, but our listener submits, they say, uh, hey, my sister and I have both dealt with cancer. Uh, we've been dealing with cancer since 2021. I've had three cancers, and I'm in remission. My sister was in remission until her cancer metastasized to her lungs. Mm. We asked why? Yeah. Knowing there isn't a real answer, we trust God, but still, what are we supposed to learn from living in this valley for so long? H- how do we figure that in with our faith? Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's a that's a very difficult situation, and uh, the the listener actually gave a very honest answer, like, why? And we know there's not an answer. I'm yeah. like, right. Yep. Um, if you if you ask me why to tragedies, um, I'm not going to insult you by making up an answer, right? Uh, because I, I could throw some cliches at you. You've heard them many ways, and don't you don't want to hear that again? And it doesn't really answer the question. So why me uh, is a fair thing, especially I think. If you're a Christ follower, when you're like, I'm trying to serve the Lord, maybe you have children, uh, et cetera, it's like, yes, these are incredibly difficult things uh, to go through and to process. So this is what I would tend to say. Uh, God does not often tell us why, but he does tell us what. Mm. And I think that's important. Um, I like to say... Uh, I often don't understand God, but I have chosen to trust Him. Mm. And I think that's what faith is, or at least a big piece of it. So it can be cancer, it can be why is there evil in the world, you know, how come bad things happen to good people? There's philosophical questions that there are not answers to. Um at the core of what it means to follow Jesus is faith. So the Bible says that the the work that God wants from me is to believe in the one who he sent. So it's believing in the whole of Jesus, and part of that is that he is sovereign, part of that is he's um, omniscient, and, uh, and he knows everything, he's powerful, and he's in control. Why is he controlling and steering my life this way? I don't know. What am I supposed to do when my life is going a certain direction? I'm like, well, that I do know, because hmm. the Bible tells us. So for me, the the go to verse in all of the, our, our passage, I meant to say, is James chapter one, hmm. and and uh, I have actually uh, memorized this passage for my life. And then just 30 years of pastoring, um, I've, uh, I've quoted this a thousand times. So what it says, and I'll, I'll mix up about three different translations here. Sure. So I'm going to call this a paraphrase, but it's what it says. So it's, it, uh, the Bible says, James says, Count it joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, because the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that it's complete so that you are complete and mature, not lacking anything. And in any of you doubts, he should, or doesn't know why, he should ask God who gives, uh, gives generously without finding fault. But if you doubt, 
um, you, you're, you're going to be blown and tossed by, by the wind. You're going to be back and forth all over the place. So what God does in James chapter 1 is he gives us a what. So count it joy whenever my faith is tested in any way. So I like to say that that's anything from the trivial to the tragic. Uh, I can be just as devastated over Nick Chubb blowing his knee out as I am cancer in a given moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, And sometimes it's not until real tragedy like cancer comes along that I that I put the other in perspective, right? But my faith, my obedience, my trust, my hope, my identity is all being challenged in those moments. So uh, James says, "Count it joy, because the testing of your faith develops perseverance, or it develops spiritual strength, and that perseverance has to finish its work." so that you're mature and complete. So with this cancer, I don't know why, I know what. I know that God is giving you a spiritual strength that you would have never had otherwise. Mm -hmm. And why is it coming back? Because that work is not done. God sees more maturity in you than you can see in yourself. The the Greek language that that's translated into English out of, so Greek has like a, a, a tone to it, and the tone of that language is a coach speaking to an athlete. Hmm. So it's do one more rep, go one more mile, don't give up. And the athlete is, I hurt, I'm in pain, I can't do it. Yes, you can. There's more in you than you know that's in you. So that trial causes that perseverance, and that perseverance doesn't change until that work is complete mm. to your, you are mature, lacking nothing. So you, you, God has brought out the full potential, so to say, of who you are in, in him. So generally... We don't like that, right? I don't. I don't want cancer. <laughs> sure. So like I'm like, I don't I don't want that. And and generally I think what we would tend to say is God could have given me something else and I would serve him the same way. And this is back now to faith. I don't know why, I just know what. I'm like, well, the scripture says that's not accurate that this trial was necessary to bring out the fullness of what God wanted to to do through me. So when you start to change the question and you and, and you take the question from why would God do this to me or allow this and you start to change it to what does God want to accomplish through this? you start to see that trial completely differently. Hmm. And you start to see that it it sounds a little bit like when you get a cancer diagnosis or just fill in your blank of other trials, right? But we'll just go with cancer because of the, of the note. You get a cancer diagnosis. It's feels fatalistic. It feels like a punishment. It feels overwhelming. And it feels like your life's vision and your life's dream has been destroyed. When you say, why, God, would you do that? It's, it, it's from that position of how could you allow my life's dream, my life's mission. And that life's dream may be like raise my kids. You know, it's not that they're bad. Mm-hmm. Why would you do that? When you shift that question to what? Uh, what you start to see is that God is bringing you into a new life vision and new life goal. And embracing the what of that is actually life-giving. Hmm. And it's visionary as opposed to life-defeating. So I have a, fr- a good friend, uh, Katya, she got cancer. Uh, it was a, a very aggressive cancer. And I remember the night that uh, she was first diagnosed, her family called me and said, can you please come over? It's very devastating. She was 21 or 2 at the time, very, very young. 
And I remember sitting down with her in her family room, and people are crying, and we're praying. It's very devastating, and oh. and you know, kind of letting it be that way. There's a grief that comes into place. There's a processing fear, like all that's completely legitimate and difficult. Um, so we were there for a while, and like things started to uh, settle in. You know, people, the tears turned to conversation. The People started to laugh a little bit. You know, it's it's just kind of the way that it goes. And and Cat, we called her Cat. Cat and I just were sitting beside each other. And I said, uh, I said, so I go, Cat. We were friends. And I go, Cat. What are we going to do with this? And she's like, What do you mean? And I said, Well, you you have been given a trial to mature you and complete you. Um, C.S. Lewis has this great quote. He says, uh, pain is God's megaphone. Mm. You know, And so I'm like, what do you want to do with it? Because what happens is I said, you have a platform that nobody else has. And, and she, go, she goes, what, what are you saying? I said, cat. I said, everybody listens to the girl with cancer. <laughs> and I said, you can say anything to anybody and they'll let you say it. In fact, they'll they'll appreciate that you said it because you have cancer. Well, that girl, man, something clicked in her, and that we made that like our little phrase, like everybody listens to the girl with cancer. And she went on a mission, and she told everybody about Christ. Absolutely no fear. She and we. I went to. I would go see her. Like you know, every, every once in a while. The church was much smaller back then. So I go see her uh, and talk to her. And she would be like, "And I told this person. And I told this person. And I told this person." Well, what Cat did is she found life in the what. And I'm not saying that that's what everybody. You don't all need to do what. But she did. But she recognized. She's like, "Oh, wait a minute." Everybody listens to the girl with cancer. That's the what. And the power of her life and testimony, God was maturing her. He's like, you got so much more in you than you're ever going to bring out yourself. I'm going to allow this trial. Mm. She counted it as joy. Now, we prayed a lot about it, and God used her in, in powerful ways. Now, she would really have preferred not to have cancer. Sure. Yeah. Right. So it's it's still not the pat. Nobody's saying you should, you know, quit complaining. You should be happy. That's not that's not what it is at all. I just don't know the why. Mm-hmm. So, what I found in these situations is when your life is blown up and it's tragic, God doesn't always give you the answers. He but he does give you the choices. And so what you have is you have the choice about whether you're going to run to the answers or run to the questions. Mm -hmm. And this is my observation. This is Jeff Bogue's opinion of, you know, being a pastor for a long, long time. People who run to the questions are miserable because they cannot be answered. Um, and I see this in cancer. I see this in the loss of a child. I mean, I just think of mm. some of the most horrific things that a, that a person can go through. Why? I don't know. How come? I don't know. What was God thinking? I don't know. Why did God answer their prayer, but he didn't answer our prayer? Like, I don't know. I just legitimately don't know. If you run to those questions, it's fair. You can do it. But if you try to build a life and a future in those questions, those questions will torment you because they're unanswerable. Mm -hmm. The other choice is to run to the answers. Christ loves me. He is going to redeem this trial. Pain is never pointless. Uh, God has entrusted me with a platform I wouldn't have otherwise had. God wants me to communicate the gospel. Everybody listens to the girl with cancer, right? And my observation is the people who live in those answers 
find hope and they find vision and they find joy, not the hope, vision, and joy they thought they were going to have in their life. And I think you got to be very fair and non judgmental about that. Because if you came and blew my life up, I wouldn't like it either. Right. But a vision, a, 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 a mission, and a, and a hope and a joy that God wanted them to have, and they find great satisfaction and peace in that. I think you just so wonderfully described when, when the scriptures say that when we grieve, we grieve, but not like those without hope. Right. It's because, yes, the questions are there. Yes, we don't have the answers. But when your confidence and your trust is placed in the hope of God, it alters the type of grief that you're going through. That's right. And so uh, it's just the, the trustworthiness and the, and the faithfulness of God, when you latch onto that, the storms will come. It's like Jesus said, the storms will come, but you've built your house on the rock. That's right. And the, 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 I think that's important that what you just said, like we grieve, but not like this. Don't, uh, this is not to the person who wrote the note and her sister. This is to everybody else. Don't be cliche with, these, with your friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't be like, well, God's got you. Count it joy. Like, don't, don't go buy that T-shirt for them. Now, they can buy that T-shirt for themselves. Sure. These are conclusions they need to reach. They ask a question, I'm answering it. These are not conclusions that you need to reach for them. Mm-hmm. And and um, That's I th- the point of what God's doing. He's building the perseverance so that they can become mature. That's right. Their trial is not your lesson. Yeah. It's theirs. What What we need to do for these friends and family that we love is we stand with them of course we point them to faith, of course we point them to Christ, and then we represent Christ in those things. I think that, um, I don't think, I know that we have a terrible time letting people struggle. Mm -hmm. We have a terrible time giving them time to reach a conclusion. They're like, I got diagnosed with cancer. You should count as joy. It's like, I haven't even downloaded what's happening. Like, shut up is what you (laughs) you want to do. And I'm like, don't do that. Like, don't grieve with them. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is scary. It's difficult. It's painful. It's miserable. Like, you grieve with them. Um, they have to reach these conclusions. Now, we can nudge and lead and pray and those kind of things. But I think we, I think this is where Christianity sometimes gets the, a, a little bit of a reputation for being shallow. Will throw an answer at somebody who's not asking that question. Yeah, they're trying to share their heart, and we're trying to fix them. And this is where, like, I don't think Jesus does that. He journeys. I always find it fascinating that Jesus let Lazarus die, mm-hmm. and then he wept with with his sisters. Mm-hmm. Like he he let that journey play out. He was with them. Now, there was victory, and for the believer, we, we always win. Mm-hmm. But we need to take the journey with people um, and, and just be cautious about that. So this, I'm answering their question. I'm not giving everybody ammo to right. fire every, yeah, everybody if any, else. If anything, I hope this gives them compassion. Yeah. You know, to, to, let, to come alongside, like you said, and, and walk with them, to mourn with those who mourn. To, to, to comfort those when they need it and to realize and pray that, like, God, do what only you can do yeah. in their life. That's really, really helpful. I hope it's helpful for our listener and, and her sister. Um, and, of course, uh, with them and with anyone struggling through anything uh, re- uh, re- even reminiscently close to what they're going through, we would love to journey with you and be those mourners, to be those comforters, and to help each other through that. If you have questions like this that you'd like uh, addressed, you can always submit those through bath.gracechurches.org slash mixed messages. And if you like what you're hearing and you want to hear more of it, make sure you subscribe, follow, rate, and review our podcast. If you're looking for a community of people to journey through life with, you can always check us out and join us on the weekend. Let's, let's meet, let's talk, let's pray, let's engage this pathway with a faithful and trustworthy God together. Thank you so much for jumping in with us today as we continue to seek God's voice through all the mixed messages around us. See you next time.